essentially celebrate and honor all that effort and all that work and the success that people have in the, in the classroom. And uh, and so I'm I'm you know really just always love coming here and seeing this award and seeing the faculty who who uh, the, the person who wins get to come and talk about their experience teaching, but even more just to let us have a chance to reflect on all of the great teaching that goes on here and the learning experiences and how you know, incredible that interaction between faculty and students and kids in classrooms uh, is. Okay, with that, uh, I'm going to turn it over to the committee and uh, Radwa, Radwa Hamed, Hamed is going to lead up. Radwa, come on up and take your question. Out of tune singer, if I said. Okay, so if I ask you to think about your favorite teacher, think a second to think about who that is. It might be the teacher who will give you the creative space to color your pasta whichever way you want in your pasta necklace. Or it might be the teacher who actually sat with you after class to say how chemistry bonding really works. Or someone who just believed in you and told you to come visit them after your time is off in school. It can be a coach, a mentor, a parent, or someone at work who just pushed you to be a better version of yourself. For some of us, it's a continuous pursuit to find out. We show up to the GSD, we take up space, and we look at role models. We think about who can give us an insight or a sign that we're on the right track. It might be a female co-founder who harder way in order to make space for herself. It might be a professor from an underrepresented group who falls so hard to be heard and listened to. It might be someone who, need, who advocated for someone else who needs help. And for that, we're very grateful for the people who facilitate it, and mostly the teachers who facilitate it. The power of this experience stems from listening empathetically and not sympathetically. And this is what we wanted to emphasize this year. However, one important factor that emerged this year is equity and inclusivity. And it's been a driving factor in the way we were making our decisions. And it's obviously a way for successful innovation and purpose and leadership. Thank you. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the process so that we all know how we got to our decision. So each year, the NBA Students Association has um, academic committee chooses a selection committee, all of us, uh, to, to oversee the process of determining, determining the Distinguished Teaching Award winner. And with that, we also always select five recipients of Letters of Honor, because it's really hard to choose just one person. So this year's committee is uh, made up by myself, Carolina, uh, a fellow MBA2, Kevin Heldren, Gabby Joseph, and uh, Rado Hamed, MBA1. And it's our honor to be here today. We first want to thank Georgia Toll from the uh, Students Association Academic Committee that made this all possible and made sure that uh, everyone is here and that the, the process uh, ran smoothly. Secondly, we would also like to thank uh, Kristen Harris Barkis. Where are you, Kristen? There. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dean Paul Lawyer and Dean Jonathan Levin, Levin for, for their support. This year, we received 180 nominations for 44 professors and lecturers. We were inspired to read the countless anecdotes of how these professors and lecturers have inspired students and made a difference in our classmates' lives. Indeed, in years where we face challenges from within and outside our community, it is astonishing to see how people rise to the challenge. Professors were cornerstones in making people feel heard and supported. We, have, we learned that we can lean on one another, we can make each other stronger. We are so grateful for all these educators that helped create this space, and that's what we want to honor today. We review the nominations based not only on what Rado said, but on their teaching uh, excellence, ability to inspire classmates and motivate students to learn, willingness to engage in deeper questions, not just the surface level questions, and go beyond the classroom curriculum whenever it makes sense. Our decision is made mostly on the impact that these professors and educators made on changing classmates' lives. So in particular, this year, uh, one thing stood out, and that was representation, that representation and advocacy matter. 
Guaranteeing that our student body is connected and embedded in real world issues is what drove most of the nominations this year. Our community has witnessed multiple incidents this year that has highlighted how much the GSB is a microcosm of, of what is happening around the world. We are no strangers to that, even just this week. But we are here to celebrate teaching in our community. This year represents a post-COVID regression, discontinuity, quasi-experiment <laughs> in teaching at Stanford. The classes were offline, then online, then hybrid, and then offline again. Professors had to teach with masks, without masks, then on Zoom, and, and then without Zoom. Even taking attendance was a feat on its own. I don't know how it's going to stuff. <laughs> we were all still adapting to the new not-so-natural raising of your voice to overcome the barrier of those KN and N95s. Despite these many variations, GSP professors went above and beyond to rise to the challenge. And the true caliber of GSP teaching continued to shine through. Today, we are honored to recognize some of the best of those stellar instructors. While the Distinguished Teaching Award is reserved for a single professor each year, we had many strong contenders, 12 shortlisted, and we'll take a moment now to recognize five finalists. Kevin will recognize our first. Thanks, Gabby. And I'm going to move this microphone stand so that I'm not tempted to burst out the song. <laughs> we, no one wants that. Uh, the, the first finalist we'd like to recognize this afternoon, who unfortunately couldn't be here with us physically, but is certainly here with us in spirit, is Keith Hennessy. I actually had class with Keith this morning, and I went up to him and said, Keith, I'm deeply offended that you're not prioritizing this, and for that reason, I'm not going to say nice things about you. I am going to say nice things about Keith because he deserves it. Today doesn't mark the beginning of Keith's relationship with the Distinguished Teaching Award. Keith was actually recognized as a finalist in both 2019 and in 2020, and he was the recipient of the Distinguished Teaching Award back in 2014. Needless to say, Keith's track record speaks for itself. The mastermind behind a handful of iconic GSB classes, including Freedom, Democracy, and Capitalism, Policy Time, and I'm Just a Bill, Keith's unique ability to move class discussions forward with grace and nuance is unparalleled. Committed to tackling difficult topics with the diligence and detail they demand, Keith creates a provocative yet respectful classroom that allows his students to hone their own thinking on really important issues. In the words of one of Keith's nominators, Keith always challenges his students to think about problems and issues in a new light. He encourages dialogue on difficult issues and teaches us how to think, not what to think. Keith is the best teacher at the GSB. As both an aspiring public servant and a two-time Tennessee student, I can say with absolute certainty that the GSB community is a more thoughtful place because of Keith. Please join me in congratulating Keith as a finalist. Our next finalist is also no stranger to the Distinguished Teaching Award Committee. Uh, for the second year in a row, we have today Professor Professor Danielle Savas. Did I say this year? Yeah. <laughs> so Dr. Savas' uh, dedication to make the classroom a fun and safe space for students to learn the concepts of OSM was again high praise this year. She is known for designing accessible materials that break down complex problems into simple steps and guaranteeing that no one in the classroom is left behind. Additionally, your dedication to students more broadly by both staying late to chat after class with anyone that wants to talk about anything beyond OSM, but also you sharing your personal experiences with the classroom didn't go unnoticed. It was especially touching to read how you encourage people to ask any question making the whole saying, no question is a stupid question, really come to life, creating a safe space for students inside and outside the classroom. I have just one comment from a student because it's so long, and I think it says it all that I want to share with you. Professor Savant is one of the most dedicated teachers I've ever had. She would stay after class to provide support for students as we would keep practicing our, our assignments. She would add in a fun motivational game longitudinally through each lecture. 
to make them one of the most technical classes at the GSP coordinator. She created a class community that was truly collaborative and let, helped students learn from one another. She normalized asking questions and struggling, uh, and struggling with the challenging material. She shared stories from both her personal and professional life that made me, uh, made me feel more connected to her uh, and uh, more invested in what we were learning. I will honestly probably never use OSM in my future career. <laughs> but the skills she taught me about problem solving in teamwork will stick with me. And, and Danielle's course will be one that I'll never forget. This is really inspiring. Congratulations. <laughs>
and went on to say that her research on biases in hiring and her work in diversity and inclusion should be required for every GSP student and professor. So please join me in congratulating Dr. Sterling. we've all been waiting for, <laughs> the year's recipient of the Distinguished Teaching Award. While none of the members of, the committee, uh, of this committee had the fortune to uh, take a class with this year's winner, we lived vicariously through the comments and nominations of our classmates. They were endless and they were so inspiring that we really couldn't stop reading them. These professors' classes are the favorites of many. The winner is known for their ability to perfect, perfectly balance in-class experiences with research backup. They make classes fun, engaging, and unexpected. Uh, I think we, we even read about some coffee tastings in class, which I think is very helpful for Isaiah class. <laughs> uh, and it gets better. Despite everyone complaining that we have too many core classes, several students claim that this class should be part of the core curriculum. <laughs> this professor is also known for being warm, authentic, and empathetic. Then sharing personal experiences make them more approachable and someone that students can lean on whenever they need to. Beyond the classroom, this professor stood out for their outstanding leadership in a global study trip, especially when things didn't go well, which you know unfortunately happened a lot this year. <laughs> During the trip, the professor integrated content with what was happening around the students uh, and brought uh, the group together like no other through, the, uh, through their authenticity and warmth. For all these reasons and many more, we are honored to recognize Professor Sushi Huang as the this year's Distinguished Teaching Award. I know you're ready for the mic, but we're not done bragging on it. <laughs> not done just yet. As Catalina mentioned, no one on the committee this year has had the pleasure of taking a class with Professor Huang, although Gabby and Rod West will have a few quarters to, to fix that. But we think that speaks to the weight and the power of the many nominations she received from so many students this year. To add just a bit more color, we wanted to share a few quotes pulled directly from those student nominations. To begin, Suchi's consumer behavior class is really interesting. She's an engaging lecturer and tries to involve students in every part of every lecture she delivers. From coffee tastings to skits to examples about toilet paper and dog beer, I ate up every possible piece of content I could. <laughs> Suchi, I'd love to learn more about dog beer um, when, when we've got time. Another student said, Suchi goes above and beyond to create a welcoming, engaging learning environment for her students. From fun in-class experiments to sharing deeply personal stories about how she's found her way in life and here at the GSB, she's incredibly generous with her time and wisdom. And lastly, Suchi consistently highlighted unexpected research, unexpected research findings that often changed the way I thought about the subject matter. Consumer Insights has been the most creative and well-structured class I've taken at the GSB. It's clear she cares deeply about her teaching and works extremely hard to make her class special and useful. I have to say, uh, once the, the committee decided who the winner was, uh, we figured it would be a good idea to give her a FaceTime mm -hmm. because she wasn't on campus. And internally, we thought, all right, is it weird to get a FaceTime from an unsaved number? I personally wouldn't feel great about it. We confirmed that it was, in fact, weird, but decided to move forward. <laughs> and as soon as Suchi realized that she had won the Distinguished Teaching Awards, she quickly turned her camera on, and her smile was contagious, her laughter was infectious. So Suchi, as someone who also called it, University of Texas, his alma mater, it is my distinct privilege to welcome you to the stage as this year's Distinguished Teaching Award recipient.
kind words and for the awards. Along with all the other faculty and my colleagues mentioned today, I feel deeply, deeply honored. The first teacher in my life was my mother. She is a dedicated elementary school teacher in Taiwan. She taught me her philosophy of teaching, which is the Chinese saying, Jiao Xue Xiang Zha. I Googled, but there is no perfect English translation for this phrase. <laughs> this essentially means that teaching benefits both teacher and student, that teaching and learning go hand in hand. So from that light, the Distinguished Teaching Award is really a Distinguished Learning Award. So I thought I should spend my time with you today to talk about what I've learned over my past nine years at Stanford and whom specifically I would like to thank for those valuable lessons. First, I would like to thank my amazing teaching team. There are a lot of them in this team. I'm going to highlight a few of them today. Belinda, my MA for nine years. Shreda, my TA for the Customer Behavior course. Ming and Jennifer, my amazing partners for Stanford Tsinghua Exchange Program and all the GSD trips and Barbara and her kick-ass design crew. <laughs> what I've learned from my teaching team is that success in teaching comes from the ability to listen, to adapt, and to persevere. My teaching team has helped me listen to students' needs, which evolve every year, and to persevere in executing my most creative, in other words, the craziest teaching idea. <laughs> Without them, my teaching would have been static, outdated, and boring. So I thank them for this valuable lesson. I also would like to thank my amazing colleagues at GSB. What I've learned from them is that mentorship came in all shapes and sizes. For instance, Zach, my marketing colleague, gave me his customer behavior course material, which served as the very foundation of my content. Then I have Jennifer, who has been my faculty mentor for the past nine years giving me tons of advice and tools, as well as supporting me throughout this journey. Baba and Jonathan, both award-winning teachers, let me sit in their courses so I can learn from their charismatic teaching style. Then I also have Christian, who is an uh, expert in improv, who has taught me the art of performing on stage, and most importantly, how to stand still in front of an audience. <laughs> <laughs> I also have Frank from OB, who is my teaching advisor, and I have Joe from accounting, who gave me all the STAT program materials. That's a lot of them. And they all mentor me but in so many different ways. That is what I, what I try to do with all my students as well, to be there for them in different ways that best suit their needs. Third, I would like to thank the Dean's office for teaching me the lesson of trust. They know what I can teach before I figure it out myself. <laughs> this is how you do stuff. I get a phone call from the dean's office, Paul or John. Hey, can you do GST? Or can you advise that? My first question is always, why me? <laughs> Second question, what's that acronym? <laughs> I never think I can teach any of this content until I actually do it. Then I realize, not only I can master it, but I have unique perspectives to bring to those courses, programs, or years. I don't know what type of machine learning algorithm they have back there in the office, <laughs> but it works. <laughs> the trust they put in me is how I can continue to grow and learn. Of course, most importantly, I want to thank all my students over the past nine years in my consumer behavior course in the Stanford Team Exchange Program and in all the global study trips that we shared together. All of you have helped me improve my materials, facilitate my success, and most importantly, taught me the lessons of compassion and courage. Let's start with compassion. I have made a lot of mistakes in teaching over the years. I once used a visual to demonstrate targeting a target a customer segment which I learned later on looked like a missile lock and can be traumatizing to some students who are thinking about violence. What a critical mistake. Well, I didn't know, as I grew up in Taiwan in which most of the gang fights were actually fought using watermelon knives. Never seen them, 
not alone, let alone Ms. Olaf. So students came to me in private, told me about this issue, enabled me to fix it before it's too late. Too. Those students not only demonstrated compassion for their fellow students, but also compassion for me as their teacher. They gave me the room to grow and to learn. In addition to compassion, the second valuable trait I've learned from all my students is courage. We have the most courageous students here at Stanford GSB. You all have given up a lot to be here. You all have been through a lot of difficulties, past trauma, personal and professional struggles, and also faced a lot of uncertainty about the future. Every time I speak to you, you give me hope that no matter how difficult it is to actually change the world, you are on it. By being brave, you make me brave as well. You make me believe that I can be myself at Stanford, that I can make an impact in this community, and through you all, I can make an impact in this world. I think this is what the GSB community is all about. We support each other's journeys by listening to each other as diligent students, and at the same time, mentoring each other as caring teachers. We place a wavering trust in each other. And as situations change, and as the world becomes more and more uncertain and confusing each day, I know that we will continue to adapt. We will continue to persevere. And we will continue to thrive. Because this community is built on compassion for each other and courage to do what's right. Thank you again for this prestigious award. And most importantly, thank you all for being my teacher and teaching me these valuable lessons over the past nine years. Thank you. Nikki, that was fantastic. Thank you for that speech. I know that meant a lot to everyone that's watching. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was just beautiful. I want to let me conclude just by saying let's have one more round of applause for both the committee and for all of the faculty who were nominated, were finalists, and for our winner. <laughs> Thank you everyone for taking time out of your schedules today to be here for this and to celebrate all the great teaching that goes on here. And Thank you again to the committee. Thank you to the winners who find the West and to all the faculty who made this year such a terrific year in the classroom. So thanks everyone. <laughs>